What do you absolutely need to know before your first off-road triathlon run leg? By the end of this video, I'm gonna give you the five things that I wish I had known before my first off-road triathlon. It would have made the experience so much easier, and so I know it's gonna help you as well. Hey, it's Coach Eric here bringing you weekly training and racing tips to improve your off-road triathlon experience. So if you're new here, consider hitting that red subscribe button. You won't miss another video. It's totally free. This is the third video in the series of the five things that I wish I had known before my first off-road try in swim, bike, and run. So last week was the bike. Uh, hit the upper right corner. I'll put the link there. Today we are just talking about the trail run. So here's the five things you got to know for the trail portion. Don't stress out over trail shoes. Yes, is a trail shoe. Yes, I have one. I raced my first six races in a regular road shoe before I switched over to the trail shoe. They're nice, but you don't absolutely have to have them. A lot of the races, they have varied terrain. Uh, one race I'm thinking of in Michigan has about a, a mile or so on grass, and then it has like a quarter mile on actual pavement, and then there's another two miles approximately of single track dirt trail. So the road shoes just work fine, and especially if it's something you're stressing uh, over. It's just not necessary for the first few. I actually had a lot of difficulty trying to get my first pair of trail shoes. That I tried them on, they felt fine inside, but once you hit the, the variable terrain, uh, it's just a different feel. So I actually had to get out there and, and run in them. And so I actually took two pairs back, uh, which I always feel bad about. I never do that, but I did with these trail shoes, two different brands, um, until I finally uh, settled on one that worked uh, for me. So for the first race or two or three or six, you don't need them and maybe study your, the race you're doing uh, to see how much uh, of the, each type of surface is at that race and you can sort of decide that way if it's worth uh, the effort to get the trail shoe beforehand. Number two, you're probably going to walk in an off-road triathlon run leg. Really, this is for two reasons. Number one, the courses are typically extremely challenging. In another video, I'll put the link in the upper right, I've accused race directors of being somewhat masochistic, uh, but that's part of the challenge and it's fun, but they are difficult. And so there's some sections where the incline is so difficult that you will be walking. Um, even if you're a strong runner, um, there's times where even if you don't have to walk, that all the effort you're exerting and trying to run uh, your heart rate's going through the roof. You're actually probably better off doing a speed walk or walking to keep that heart rate at a relative level. And then once it flattens out or goes downhill, then maybe perhaps picking up the pace. But some of the sections are extremely difficult. You're going to walk one time, five times, maybe 10 times, maybe even have a race walk strategy, um, depending on how difficult the course is. Uh, the other reason why you might walk is just because the, the difficulty navigating the terrain, even there's a, a, a fairly flat section, there may be several rocks and so on that if you tried to run through it like you normally would, you'd end up uh, tripping or um, you know slipping. So it's even just kind of walking for a few steps to carefully get around the rocks or the roots and then you can start running again. But I, I can't think of every race, any race I didn't walk at least once in, um, or at least for a short time. And so um, just be prepared for that. Number three is that your shoes are probably going to get wet. So this is a range from, um, you know, stepping in some uh, small puddles to uh, if it uh, perhaps rained the day before heavily, uh, you know, if you're racing on the road, your shoes wouldn't get wet that day. Um, but a lot of the uh, race courses, there may be large puddles in areas that didn't dry up from overnight rain. And so you may be um, completely uh, having your shoes submerged in water. And so just uh, remember that as you'll be running with, with uh, heavy, wet shoes. Um, and then it goes all the way to the extreme of a race I did in Arizona, actually, where the water was so deep that crossed the single track. Um, it was actually over our heads. And so uh, you can see here, there's several of us swimming across the single track. It was you know, uh, probably a 50 yard section, but enough where you couldn't avoid it, you had to swim across. Um, so really uh, anything goes uh, with off-road triathlon. Um, but at the same time, there's been a couple races where uh, it didn't get uh, wet at all. So just kind of be prepared for everything. Number four is speed laces. We are back to the shoe. These things here are called speed laces. They're not that expensive. There's a couple different types. It's really just an elastic shoelace that you replace uh, with the shoelaces that it comes with. And there's, on these particular ones, there's um, a little device here that helps cinch it up. And so you can make it as tight as you need. 
like that. Um, and it'll stretch. And so as your foot, um, you know, perhaps maybe, maybe swells during the race, it'll conform to that. And so it'll expand a little bit, but it stays on. Um, and it fits pretty nice. And, you know, when I finish the bike leg, uh, you know, I, I don't always feel like, um, you know, bending over for very long. So I get my shoe on, I just want to go, you know, if you have to end up tying them. And sometimes if your uh, fingers are, um, you know, not working real well as you're, as you're just trying to race, you might uh, take you a little bit longer to tie your shoe. Uh, and then, you know, going back to the previous uh, thing I wish I knew about running through puddles is that wet laces are more likely to come apart. And so these, if they get wet, uh, you know, it's not going to come apart. And so having speed laces um, uh, is, makes it easier, but not to mention it actually makes you go through transition even faster, which, um, you know, everyone's not super focused on that, but it kind of does multiple things in one to have those uh, some sort of speed lace uh, during the run leg. All right, and number five of the things I wish I knew for the run leg of an off-road triathlon is that your times are really hard to gauge in terms of what it means. Uh, it's not uncommon for your fastest pace of a, of a section uh, to be several minutes different. So one example, you, you could be running an uphill portion and it, it's a 13 minute mile pace and then you circle around and have maybe like a 10 minute mile pace and then there's an eight minute mile pace and then back to 12 minutes as the course uh, you know, goes up and downhill. Uh, it's very uncommon to have a consistent you know, 10 minute mile, 10 minute mile, 10 minute mile like you, like you might on the road. So be very, very aware that you're gonna have that varying terrain. Don't get discouraged by that. Um, because you're going to be running some slower times than normal and your heart rate's going to be up and you're going to be, you're going to be tired, totally normal. Everyone else is experiencing uh, the same thing. And the other part is that distances don't always measure exactly. So, I mean, I think of a race uh, uh, where it was like 3.4 miles was the distance of the run. I don't, I've never done a race of 3.4. I've done three miles, done a 5K, you know, 3.1, but, uh, you know, it's hard to gauge well, what's, what's good for 3.4 or 6.55 uh, is another example. So uh, that's part of uh, part of the experience of the off-road tries is they don't always um, add up, but um, to just being aware of that and not to discourage with your time seem um, slower than normal because if you've done any type of training on trails, they definitely will be slower, but it doesn't mean you're not uh, fit and doesn't mean you're not um, doing well in the race. So those are the five things I wish I had known before my first try. I have a bonus one, strength training. Trying to at least fit in one day a week, uh, if more, if you can, but uh, lateral strengthening, side lunges, monster walks, uh, even regular lunges, squats, anything that will help with um, strengthening the legs a little bit more than you typically would, uh, given all the difficult terrain, um, the ups and downs of, of the races, as well as the uneven terrain. Uh, strength training, I think, will really go a long way to help your off-road uh, running experience. So that's it. I hope it was helpful for you. Please, if you feel like there's something that helped you or wish you had known before your first off-road try that wasn't on this list, please engage with the community below uh, and put a comment. I know they'll appreciate it. I'll definitely appreciate it. And if you want to check out the other videos in the series, in the upper right, I'll put the swimming uh, top five things I wish I'd known before my first swim uh, leg. And until next week, I will see you on the trails.